Hello and welcome to Tag Talk. At Tag Talk, usually we talk a little bit about what's in the Adjutant General Directorate in Human Resources Command, but this time I'd like to switch it up just a little bit. And so I have my good friend, Colonel Greg Johnson. He's actually the Director for Officer Personnel Management here it. at HRC. And, um, you know, Greg, you and I have been battle buddies since we were majors. And this time, instead of telling uh, the field what is in the Adjutant General Directorate, I really wanted to share something that's more personal to you and I, and that really is the health and the future of the AG Corps. So uh, I guess we wanna let the viewers know that we're coming out with an AG Corps strategy. And I wanted uh, you know, your sense of what do you think it's gonna mean to the Corps and why do we need a strategy? Yeah, is that is that a big question for me, ma'am? Right. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I'm uh, really really honored to be here, uh, and then really to talk this topic, which is um, pretty important for our core. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, but also for I, I think the Army and and really the the direction of uh, you know modernization that the Army is undertaking right now. Um, it's kind of a ripe time to take a look at the core and where we've we been and. You know what are we doing right now, and right. and really starting to think through. Hey, well, what is going to define success for the core, um, and for the Army senior leaders? Kind of intent as to where the the Army needs to modernize, and and I think that was really the baseline of of us talking. You know, just you know, you know, as as we've right. gotten promoted over the years, and as yeah. we've gotten into these positions uh, over the last couple of years. Um, and, and taking a look internally and saying, hey, what, what needs to change to support that modernization and to really usher in um, the Army of 2030, the Army of 2040, um, and what, what does uh, the AG Corps do to make that happen? Right, and I think, you know, a, a lot of times you talk about modernization, you think of weapon systems, uh, but we also need to modernize the way we think. Um, and us owning systems here within Human Resources Command are really finding that we were more systems oriented versus data oriented. And now that the Army, I mean, the Secretary is focused on people modernization and readiness. Um, and people are, are really at the center of it. And so the way the Corps not only cares for them, but is able to see the Army is really going to be important as we talk about data and our skill sets of the future. So if you had to say, what is a future skill set that we don't have now that the Corps should have when we talk about the Army of 2030, what are a couple of those attributes? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I certainly don't want to offend folks, right? You know, because I think we have some fantastic leaders. We have fantastic soldiers. We have really skilled um, uh, civilians um, officers enlisted doing HR business across the Army. So, you know, I want to say that up front. Um, right. But but I do think if you take a look at how we execute um, our business today, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, we're fairly transactional. Um, we're fairly process oriented. We are definitely tied to say what the regulations and things kind of say. Uh, and most of our, our doctrine most of our, um, you know, policies, procedures, even the the curricula that we have in our schoolhouse, right. is is really geared towards hey, having us show up and execute what's already on the table, uh, and then you know facilitate readiness and things like that. But it's very straightforward, very transactional. Right. I I, I think the the shift here is is that um, as you add more data, Right. As you add more information, right. um, how do you think through what that data and information gives you to then provide, you know, additional options, additional uh, ideas on policy procedure um, that you, you kind of transition from, say, just a transactional execution to, hey, there's really better ways to do things. The data is showing me that there are better options. There are better decisions. There are better things that we can do that support right. readiness that help modernize the Army, um, but you have to get that skill set, right? To be able to, to think through, hey, with more data, how do you think through that? And then how right. do you synthesize that? How do you then present that in a way that commanders and other leaders can consume and then make, make decisions? And it's not just skill sets. Like you said, I mean, our Corps has been around since 1775. 
Um, we've been relevant. We've been relied upon. I think we are a, a trusted group of HR professionals, but it's in order to remain that authentic, trusted, innovative, agile group of professionals, you know, we have to not only change our skill sets, but I think it's not just that, it's, it's a mindset. You know, it's a culture that sees us making impacts at the enterprise strategic level as HR planners, uh, but then also at the battalion level, to your point, with a different set of data, we can make reliable, predictive analysis for commanders on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I hearken to, you know, if you're just executing, you're coming to your boss with, hey, 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 this is what I see, right. and here's a decision. But then if you go, hey, if we change the policy, or if we change the law, or we, we had this uh, data to help us with our decision, right. it then all of a sudden opens up a whole handful of other options that probably uh, are the optimal solution. It's almost like we, we hear a lot, hey, get to yes, right? And we think right. if you're a great HR professional, you can find a way to get to yes. And it's while still remaining ethical uh, and within the law. I think this new uh, mindset is more of how do I get to yes? And I know that there's an opportunity legislation. We've seen it, you know, with different uh, officer programs, um, with talent management. How do I change uh, the, the DOTI? How do I change a regulation in order to provide different opportunities, not only for us, but for our commanders? Yeah, absolutely. And that, it's a bit of a strategic skill set, right? right. You, you know, so you, you'll start to see in the HR strategy that there's a there's there's focus on uh, certain capabilities. And one is how do you leap into that ability to have a strategic mindset yep. that, that you can look at those kinds of policies and go, hey, here's here's a different way of of chewing on it. Um, you, you know, every every couple of months, uh, maybe it's every three, four months we do uh, right an AG pre command course right. uh, where colonels, uh, lieutenant colonels, colonels and, and sergeant majors come in and, mm -hmm. and really get, you know, an oversight of uh, or, or overview of, you know, hey, here's HRC, here's. Here's what it does, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, one of the comments that was a theme, this most recent one was, mm -hmm. hey, we need our leaders to be strategic in approach. And we need folks to question, um, hey, is this policy and procedure the right thing to do? It, 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 is, it has gotten us here to today, um, but, you know, you don't just need to push Right, that that paper right. in that policy that's already on 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 the deck. What you need to do is question: Is that the right thing to do moving forward? And so we need folks kind of thinking in those terms, right? Don't just come in and execute. Yeah, come in and say, "Hey, is this the optimal way the army should be operating?" Well, and then we get to you know being a critical thinker, right? It's not Absolutely. just taking things at, at face value. So. Um, I've seen that from our AG core leaders. It's why, you know, not how do I do this, but why are we doing it? And I, I think it's important that we ask why. And so to go back to uh, the highlight for today really is about having an AG core strategy. And so if you look at it from a branch perspective, you know, I don't think any other branch has laid out a, a strategy. And the reason we think it's important, if we say people are the center centerpiece for us and the Army, and if we are to take care of that centerpiece, then I think we need to have a strategy, not only internal to our core, but how we're going to support, you know, at the enterprise and strategic level. So we're excited to say we now have a published AG core strategy in the coming months. Uh, I think we have a plan to have some impl implementation plans with key stakeholders, uh, whether it be the CAC, TRADOC, but most importantly, the Soldier Support Institute, and looking at that crosswalk of .mil PF, and not only do we say what we value as a core, the capabilities you need, but how does that affect you as you go through your professional military education? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm really excited. I mean, so, so right, we, we've both been in the Army 20 plus years. I don't want to say the exact dates, um, but, it, you know, we've been in the Army for a while. Um, and, and to have something kind of published for, for the core that, that is a guiding light right. is just exciting because, right, that guiding light then sets up um, 
the entire core. Hey, what should I be looking towards? What should I be focused on? Right. What skill sets should I develop and 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 hone and become an absolute professional? You, you know, in um, and you'll start to see in the strategy that some of that is is modern things. Right. So data visualization. You know, data uh, understanding. Right. The more HR data that we have, and we start to build with IPSE and, mm -hmm. and several other systems. It's how do you really utilize that to enhance, say, talent management and readiness. Um, having that strategic mindset that says, hey, how do I change policy to facilitate, right, maintaining the all-volunteer force, um, right. to facilitate DE&I, uh, inclusion, et cetera, you know, more holistically? How do I review kind of what we're doing to build readiness over time? Um, all of that, those capabilities and skill sets um, are, are just much more important as we move forward um, and modernize, get new systems. Um, and so the, the strategy kind of lays that out. Um, and then you, you mentioned the implementation plan. Right. You know, so I get a little nerdy on some of this stuff. It's like, now you go after ACS. What grad degree should we have? Right. What certifications should we have? What, what areas should we focus additional training in? You know, is it mm -hmm. marketing? Is it organizational leadership and culture? Um, and and how it's does not that just all... degrees, right? It's right. some of the different credentialing programs. A absolutely. Absolutely. And then how does that link to the jobs that you're going to fulfill um, for the core, but also for your organizations and units? Yeah. And it's not just jobs that we have now. It's what jobs are there going to be in the future for the core? And so you talked about some of the connective tissue of some of those pieces as we go forward. And so I do want to kind of back up and say, when we talk about being connected and nested, the people strategy for the Army is out there. And so we looked at the people strategy and actually, you know, thank you to the uh, OEMA, so the Office of Economic and Manpower Analysis up at West Point, and helping us kind of take a look back at our core and kind of, and help us make an outline for this strategy. But it's connected and built upon the people strategy. And the people strategy had different lines of effort, and we are looking at the same lines of effort within our AG core strategy. And really, I think the priority is going to be on develop. So how do you develop those skills, whether it's through advanced civil schooling, it's who we're bringing into the core, um, and then pushing some different credentialing ideas. So pretty exciting. And it wasn't just, you know, uh, the two of us in a back room. Right. And the thing is, is that there, there's ownership and there's buy-in from senior leadership, from the AG uh, board of directors. And the last fall, us bringing in some talented, you know, colonels, lieutenant colonels, majors, warrant officers, and sergeants major to start off with why the core exists and what do we want to be seen as in the future and laying out those values and those capabilities that we need in the core of the future. Yeah, I mean, I thought that was one of the coolest things that, that right, you and, and several other leaders like pull together, ma'am, right? You know, so not to give you kudos like to the whole world here, but, you know, giving you kudos because uh, it was inclusive of a lot of different kind of kind of thought patterns of our of our of our teammates, mm -hmm. um, all different ranks, the schoolhouse, uh, senior leaders, uh, the big think tank at OEMA, right. all, all kind of together talking through the people strategy and then how, how does the AG Corps uh, nest with that and then right. facilitate, you know, all of these things, uh, you know, readiness in our units and, and executing the missions of, of our, you know, and the, the intent of our, of our senior leaders. Um, and, you know, that all of that is in this, you know, strategy um, that, that's going to be released here. And, you know, the next step too is is maybe just as hard. How do you then right. drive an implementation plan that we can put in motion um, that fundamentally then changes um, how uh, yeah. our, our outcomes are um, over the next fifteen to twenty to thirty years? Yeah. Um, and 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 again, you know, we we haven't necessarily done this in the past. So uh, I'm just super excited. You, you you put it on the table. You let the yeah. core consume it. We, we execute an implementation plan and, and we continue to look at and refine uh, our skill sets, capabilities, et cetera, as we go. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, that's when you really, it, it gains roots and, uh, you know, culture takes time. 
Uh, I think that what we'll be telling is the strategy lays a foundation, the implementation plan helps it grow, but only if you continue to massage it, change it over time, that it's flexible enough, that the plan itself is agile, right? Yeah. And I think it's important that we hold ourselves accountable as a core. You know, so there has to be, you know, measures of effectiveness, measures of performance. And as you said, you know, maybe coming back every quarter and checking ourselves and holding ourselves accountable, not only for the core, but what, where we're at as far as aligning with the Army 2030, 2040 plans and beyond. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll pull one thread there, ma'am. You, you know, what, one of the, the things we're trying to set as a, as a deliberate approach for the AG mm. Corps is this idea of change. Right. Right. And it goes back to what we were just talking about, you know, the strategic element, you know, being able to to review what we have on the table, um, review our organizations and then mm -hmm. make, you know, sound recommendations. But but part of that is, is we have to be comfortable with reviewing and then changing. Yeah. And and how do we how do we build a culture that's very, very comfortable with that versus comfortable, say, with just transactional things? And, yeah. and you know, again, that's. Those are some big words there, but really all it is is being able to be agile yeah. and taking a look at our processes and, and really drive into the optimal solution for the Army. But, but we need to look at it that way. So how do we look at what we're doing and then change what needs to be changed to facilitate right, the intent, right. Um, et cetera? And, I, and I, for, for me, that implementation plan tied to this strategy helps us along over time to do that. Um, well, and I think then it helps kind of think through. Uh, I think the hardest part of being a change agent isn't the initial idea, it's putting it into practice. But because it's different, that means maybe a regulation, a policy, a checklist doesn't already exist, and it's hard work. Yeah. So probably what I would say about you know being a change agent and, and seeing some of the work you're doing here in HRC and OP is, if it's easy, if it doesn't take a lot of effort, at this point we're probably not doing the right thing. Right. Um, and so it's scary, right? Like that group of officers, warrants, and sergeants major that came together to build the foundation of the strategy, I mean, we gave them a blank board and some butcher block paper because unconstrained, that's how we need to think right now. Unconstrained, what is it that you can imagine for the future? And then we can layer on the different resources or limiting you know, factors. And I think that's where we're gaining a lot of success is going in with an open mind and not being limited by this is the way we used to do it. Right, absolutely. Um, it and it's it, it it is a a kind of a frame of mind, right? You know, um, you, you know, if you're in the AG Corps and you've been around for a while, I mean, how many how many times have you heard someone say, "Well, it's in the reg, and that's how I do it," or, or yeah. whatever? It's in the SOP, or it's in the policy. That's how I do it, um, even though that may not make sense, right? You know, to the context of the problem, to to the situation or scenario at hand. Um, well, that's you know, how do we foster then an ability to look at that? And, and go, hey, there's better ways, or, or we really should be doing you know, something else. Um, for, for me, I'm, and you know me well, right? I'm always like, hey, let data drive some of these decisions. Because it's like when you, when you see things right. um, you, you know, in those terms, um, you, you know, if it's readiness, if it's command slating, if it's you know, assignments of the marketplace, if it's you know, whatever it is, you know, when you start to lay out some of these the metrics and analysis, you go, wow, um, th there's there's some maybe ways we should go. Right. That kind of stands out to you. That's right, that the data is is drawing you towards. And, y you know, for me, it's like, well, we probably have to expose some people, uh, right, to data and analytics mm -hmm. in some of these areas so then they're much more comfortable as they progress in their in their careers to, yeah. to using that skill set to, to help with that, you know, analysis or change, et cetera. Yeah, speaking about uh, exposure, um, I think part of the fear of changing and doing something different in the core is I might fail. Uh, I might not use the data correctly. I might not know how to uh, properly analyze some of the information. Uh, but I think 
we have to tell the court it's okay not to be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know, if you read about any great entrepreneur, you know what's great about them? They failed many, many times yeah. before they got it right. Yeah. And us being able to underwrite the risk as a core and go, I would rather you get it wrong 50 times to come up with that one brilliant idea. Yeah. And, and so some of that we've seen change with, you know, talent management task force. Uh, but one of the things I think for our future core is where those gaps exist, because the task force is temporary, right? When we talk about career coaches, talent assessments, if we're not ready to subsume some of those things, someone else will. And I think that will help define the core of the future for us. Um, and I know you've, you, you're doing some work with talent management. And what do you think, as far as our core for the future when it comes to career coaching, assessments, yeah. and the use of the data that you talk about? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'll even streamline it even maybe a little bit more, ma'am. I mean, it's, it's, it's some of it is tied directly to how do we execute the market. Yeah. Right. So we're in this market environment uh, in the active force mm -hmm. where, um, you know, officers and units go in and, and they preference each other and officers can fill out their knowledge, skills and behaviors and a resume that facilitates a discussion with the commander right. and they interact. Um, and as I started to look at the process holistically, um, it was like, wow, us in the AG Corps really have to be experts in all of it. Right. So how do we own the, the way that a market is executed? How do we help our commanders think through how do they recruit and interview officers? Um, how do they synchronize that effort? Those are all skill sets. Right. Right. And all of those are data skill sets, but they're interpersonal skill sets. Right. right? Some leadership, some some planning. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's also, hey, you have to understand what KSBs are. And then, right. and then there's there's like a, a, a DA, Pam, called 603, right? Which is officer, um, it's really every job that is important right. for- an, For all branches, for not all just the branches, AG Corps, right? Right, but if you're gonna be central to the market process, right. then you also have to be central in understanding what 603 says for those branches that are in your units. Yeah. Um, and so that's important. Now, assessments start to come in. So mm -hmm. we're executing probably the most, um, uh, you know, obvious ones are BCAP and CCAP for battalion command and, and, and uh, brigade command. Um, but what and what are those assessments and what do they mean? Right. And what do they mean to say KSBs? And then how do you incorporate that information and data over time mm -hmm. to how we execute talent management? Um, and then once you start to see when, once you become familiar with all of that, wait a minute. Um, we can start to maybe do a bunch of army policies different. Right. Like we could start to say, and this is where coaching comes in, hey, you're in a branch, but you have these skill sets that seem to match a functional area. Mm -hmm. Have you considered? Right. You, you know, so that's where all that starts to come together and how you can actually nudge our policies to say, hey, we could probably engage better. And I think yeah. for us, as we went through the strategy was, how do we impart the ownership of yeah. those topics um, from our core where they can start to plug in over time and right. sh really, really shape how talent management and readiness is executed, mm -hmm. which is, again, all about people. Absolutely. And, um, you know, again, it's just an exciting time uh, to be part of our core, uh, to be part of our army and the AG core strategy uh, is out there. You know, check out this website and t check out the link. And so it is, it's short, it's to the point, uh, it lays the foundation, and I'm excited to see where the implementation plan, uh, assuming this coming fall, our first implementation plan should come out. Uh, a big shout out to the Social Support Institute, uh, Colonel Marcus Motley and his team, our commandant, uh, for helping push this document out. And um, just really excited to see where our core goes. And uh, with that, uh, check out all of our links. Um, and if you wanna know more about Human Resources Command, check us out online. You can go to the TAG directorate, but I also like to give a shout out to OPMD and Colonel Greg Johnson and team and a lot of great work that they're doing here within Human Resources Command to take care of people. So to the AG Corps, we're excited, uh, but really 
It's about change in mindset, a cha being a change agent, and setting our culture so we can thrive and uh, be agile, innovative leaders in 2030 and beyond. And so again, Greg, thanks so much uh, for being here today. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing uh, for the Corps and for our Army. With that, have a great day.